Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with the third video that I committed to filming before having a baby. Um, I told you guys I was gonna do a what's in my hospital bag video and so many of you wanted me to put it live early, but I felt like putting up a video telling you what's in my hospital bag when I'm having my first baby and I have no idea what to expect. I feel like that wasn't that helpful. So instead I'm copying what Sharon Farrell did on her YouTube channel. I will link her video down below because I thought it was genius. She filmed the video before she had her baby, but then she filmed a reaction to that video once she had had the birth so she could actually go through what she did and didn't use. So that's what I'm doing today. I've edited the video which I filmed when I was like nine months pregnant and I'm gonna talk through it and kind of tell you guys what actually we used and what we didn't use. So I'm gonna get comfy, I've got my cup of tea, I've got my laptop here. I have no idea how I'm gonna edit this video. I feel like it's gonna be really complicated. Rich has gone to take Grey to get weighed. We haven't weighed her since she was born and you're supposed to do it like every month or so. So that's where she is. She's with her dad, having a great time. She's really good for any of you that are wondering. Um, we are just absolutely loving having her. She's smiling a lot now. She's starting to like hit her toys like the hang which is really cute and we're going away on holiday next week and i can't wait because i think she's gonna like grow up a lot on holiday and i think she's gonna love it and i'm really excited to go on holiday because it's been a while <laughs> let's do this i'm gonna pop in my headphones because i feel like that'll make the editing process easier okay let me start showing you what's in our hospital bag oh my god it's so weird to see me pregnant and when i say bag I kind of mean bags uh, because we didn't want to take a wheelie suitcase i was going to and then anna pointed out that I'd have to like lay it on the floor and open it up wide and it'll get in the way and it's actually not that practical in terms of opening it up and just grabbing stuff. So what I've done instead to try and make it really easy for Rich, well it'll make it easy once we're in the hospital in terms of getting all the bags in, it's a bit annoying, but I've got a during labour bag. So everything that's in that bag is for when I'm in labour and then I've got a separate bag for post delivery, post labour, so that he won't be like passing me the wrong thing during labour. It's just easy for him, it won't take him ages to kind of go through. I'm glad we didn't take a wheelie suitcase because I think Anna was right, it would have been really like in the way and annoying to open up on the floor. Um, but I think having multiple bags, the only time that was tricky um, is when we had to suddenly kind of move up to the maternity ward. Um, luckily my mum was there so she was holding all the bags like a donkey and like rolling our ball on the way up um but she got stopped by one of the midwives who were like you can't take the ball and she was like it's our ball <laughs> so i guess it was quite annoying to have more than one bag but i think i'm so happy that i did it that way and rich knows exactly what's in his bag he's helped me pack it he is in charge of the hospital bag so i think that's really important because they're going to be the ones like rummaging around not me so i've got separate bags a during labor bag post delivery bag and then also baby bag oh, for the baby bag. stuff i'm not going to show you what's inside but we're using our tibia and mile this is our actual baby bag that we'll be using when she's here and i've just put everything we need in there in terms of like baby clothes nappies hats stuff like that i'm not going to show you in this video because this is more about what i'm packing for me i did a lot of research asking people what they used and didn't use um but i think like everyone else i feel like overpacking is not as big a deal as underpacking. I think with everything, I would not want to regret not having something, but I have scaled back on a few things. So my first tip, hopefully this is a good idea, is I've actually written a list um, for each bag, like a tick list. We did use this like when my waters broke in the morning and I knew we were gonna go into hospital, I went to each bag, looked at the list and added in all the last minute bits and placed it on top of the bag because some things can't go in until last minute like my phone charger so I want to know what's in the bag and then what I still need to pack so that when I go into labour I can just check the list and be like quick I need my headphones for my handbag and just put them in and it's also really good I'm going to keep this in the bag because then Rich can check is this the bag with the TENS machine in and then he can kind of rummage through so before I show you what's in our during labour bag a couple of things I'm just going to take in the car with me this is my friend's little cushion she borrowed from someone else. It's like a donut shape. You can kind of see there's a hole in the middle and that's good sometimes to sit on on the way back from the hospital. So I'm gonna leave that in the car. I didn't have to use that. There's gonna be a lot of things that I didn't use because I ended up having a C-section. If you guys haven't watched my labor and delivery story, I'll link the video up here somewhere so you can hear the whole thing. But yeah, didn't end up needing to use that. And then I've got a couple of these maternity pads 
to lay it on the car because our car isn't leather it's fabric and if my waters break or on the way back if i'm bleeding or anything this would be good to protect the car seat so those are going in the car i think we did use those i think i used one on the way to the hospital when we first went in but after my waters broke and then i think when we drove to the hospital for the final time i think when i was sitting in the back of my mum's car i laid one of those down just in case anything came out and i'm not going to show you but my hospital notes as well during labor bag this is one of rich's bags it's from barber and let me show you what's inside oh also i've got a separate bag for snacks and drinks and stuff i'm not going to show you because i don't know there's so many random things but i've got like evian sports bottles um ribena in case i want a sugary drink i've got crisps and chocolates a lot of them i think will be more for afterwards but in case i need energy throughout just lots of different snacks going on coconut water and stuff like that as i said in my labor and delivery store we I didn't end up eating or drinking much at all as everyone warned me but we did have all the snacks and drinks afterwards so I'm glad I packed them um, because yeah after I gave birth I had them but during labor I just had coconut water water and watermelon slices which I didn't even pack Rich went and bought them from the Marks and Spencer's um, around the corner so yeah in terms of snacks not for during labor in terms of how easy or not easy the bags were to get into and stuff I don't know because I didn't touch them I wasn't even aware of the bags I didn't ask Rich for anything from the bag throughout so it was totally up to him to remember to get things or if he wanted to find something um I actually forgot to ask him before he left so I'm not entirely sure how easy they were if he gets back in time I'll ask so first of all is my water bottle this is from one green bottle I like this one because you don't have to tilt it a lot of people say to take a straw with which we will as well in case but this basically acts as a straw because you can just drink it like this. You don't have to tilt it at awkward angles. If you're upside down in a bath, you can still drink out of this. So water bottle. This water bottle was amazing. I actually ended up getting the bigger size. I took that with. I took a straw from peer pressure. Everyone told me, take a straw, take a straw. I did not use or need the straw. Like if you're going to use the straw, it's because they're giving you little cups of water, which are just not enough anyway. So using that was perfect and very important to get one that has a good sucky straw so you don't have to tilt it. Um, which was just like passing it to me when I was in the bath and I was just taking water whenever I could. This also came in really handy when we ended up having to stay in the hospital afterwards. I'm just going to grab things as I see it. This is a little portable speaker. I think I got sent this actually as part of a press gift. I'm not sure where it's from, but um, this is a little portable speaker if you want to play music. Very, very handy. We definitely used the speaker throughout the whole of the labour. I don't really remember like music playing, but the times where I do remember is that when I ended up needing a C-section, they actually let us play our own music and take the speaker in. And because I'd been playing this like calming playlist throughout, um, which is kind of like yoga songs and songs like that, it, it did make me feel really calm and it was a really nice comfort to have that playing in the background. So definitely recommend the speaker. And if you're having a C-section, ask if you're allowed to play your own music because most of the time I think you are. This is a hand fan, which I got given on a press trip as well when I went to Ibiza with Nas. You can get these on Amazon and I think we've like charged it up. I'm very worried about being hot. I'm quite a hot person and the maternity wards are really hot. We did use the fan. Every now and again, Rich fanned me when I was in the bath and it was really nice. Um, but we also used it a lot after the birth because the hospitals are so, so crazy hot. And even since then, this fan has come in handy. I keep it in my baby bag when it's been really, really hot. Um, it's really good to use. I am taking my Muji aromatherapy oil diffuser. This is one of those things I might end up being like, lol, did not use that. But no harm in having it. If I have a really long labour, putting in some like clary sage oil or lavender oils, I'm so sensitive to smells like it makes such a difference to me in terms of keeping me calm so i think it's worth giving it a go i've also well i'll show you in a minute i'm taking like a muslin cloth in case i just want to put the oils on there and smell them okay so i was talking to rich about this whether we use this or not um, i don't think we use the oil diffuser i just didn't have any sort of like time or i wasn't in the right space to be like can you put that on so unless he remembered to do it I'm sure it would have been nice to have it on, but I don't think he remembered to do it. He seems to think that we did use cloth and oil with a bit of like lavender oil on it. I don't remember. He thinks we did. So not like a necessity, but as I said in the video, like I think if I was there for like three days, I might have like thought to use it. I think if I like had an epidural and I was a bit more with it, I might put it on to like calm me, but I was just in such a different headspace. I couldn't even like think about it. So i don't think we really used it flannels these are just from primark and um, i thought these would be good maybe if i'm really hot rich can soak them in cold water and put them on the back of my neck or on my head i vaguely remember that happening maybe like once like him putting a cold flannel on the back of my neck but i'm pretty sure i was just like Ugh, get it off or maybe i liked it 
I don't really remember. That's the problem with this video. How does Sharon remember what she used and what she didn't? It's all a bit of a blur. I think we used one of the flannels. Doesn't hurt to have them. Milton wipes, um, just in case. I don't know, I wanna like wipe down the hospital ball, although I think we might take our own ball. This is one of the things, they're quite small to take, but. Lol, I definitely did not use the Milton wipes. Like I so wasn't aware of things being dirty or clean to the point that I, for some reason, wore my cashmere like long cardigan into the hospital when I was in labor and I've just taken it to the dry cleaners and oh my God, it's disgusting. And I remember like sitting on my ball with no knickers on at one point and I just don't remember ever being like, can you pass me a Milton wipe? <laughs> Someone must have just wiped it somehow. Keeps things hygienic if I want to. I have got sick bags just in case, probably mainly for the car journey there. Cause I know when you're in hospital, they prefer you to just like use the little bowls, but just in case, sick bags miraculously i did not feel sick at all during labor at any point i am such a sick person i get travel sick i always feel sick and i didn't so although we had those i didn't end up needing to use one and i've got some flip-flops from primark to walk around the hospital in that i probably will not take back home with me um i don't know if i remembered that i had those in the bag i think i went into hospital with my birkenstocks and that was kind of it and i never remembered to get out the flip-flops from the bag. It all like happened very fast at the beginning, faster than I thought, so I don't think I wore flip-flops, but I should have just gone into hospital in the flip-flops. That would have been a much better plan. I'm taking my little H&M um, sleeping bra thing with me. If I want to cover myself, if I'm in the water, I couldn't find a good maternity bikini and I thought actually, do you know what? I won't even care if something like this gets wet. So I'm just gonna take this with to where it's really comfortable if I decide I wanna wear something on there. These H&M sleeping bras are amazing. I'm still wearing them now. They are so comfortable. I would wear them like, even if I wasn't pregnant, I hadn't just had a baby. They're like, really good like evening or when you're at home, like comfy t-shirt bra. Um, but I did end up wearing one of these during labour, so I just wore the bra and nothing else. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But these are amazing. They come in two packs and I would highly recommend them. And then in terms of what to wear whilst giving birth, such a weird thing to think about because I probably won't care at the time, but I just, I didn't want, a lot of people wear like loose open shirts. I get really hot and I don't like things on my arms. So I was looking for something that had like thin straps and that was long enough that it kind of covered, covered me, but didn't kind of get in the way and wasn't like tight on my skin. So I ended up ordering like a two pack of nighties from Mother Care. So they look like this little straps it's actually like a feeding nighty so it'll be good to wear afterwards as well and then it just kind of goes down to just above my knee maybe so I thought I could wear that and I've got two in case I decide to get in and out of the bath one will kind of be dry I don't know I think that's what I'm gonna wear we will see might end up just walking around naked not even caring I think at the time I decided I didn't like the feeling of clothes being wet and I just didn't care like everyone says you don't care at the time so I wore the H&M bra and nothing else. And you don't really feel like you're naked because your bump is so huge. No one can really see what's going on down there. Like, well, I couldn't see, so I couldn't, I didn't feel like anyone else could see. Um, I did use those mother care feeding nighties a lot, like when I was in hospital afterwards and for like a month after giving birth, that's what I slept in because it was so comfortable. So I would still recommend getting the mother care nighties. They were great. Two of those, and then I am taking like a tight, long vest top with me too, because my sister was like, trust me, just take it. It'll be annoying having something that floats around in the pool. It's nice to have something tight. I don't know if I'm that person, but I'm gonna take it because she told me to. I didn't wear the tight vest top. So almost finished in this bag. In this little zip up, I've got hair bands, I've got lavender oil, and I've got a muslin cloth to put the lavender oil on. Oh, I need to put my clary sage in there. I think I had like a hairband in my hair and that's just, like before I went, I tied my hair up and I put on like a headband and that just stayed the whole time. In this bag, I've got my TENS machine, which I'll probably grab from the bag and put on whilst I'm at home in early labor, if it works out to be that way for me. We used the TENS machine when we were at home at the beginning of labor, so I didn't actually need to pack it, I could have just left it at home. I borrowed the main machine from my friend because they, they can be pricey, and then I just bought some new pads and wires online. TENS machine is meant to be amazing to like distract you from the pain in early labor. And then in here I have the kind of bits I need for the Muji diffuser. Oh, I've got another oil. Maybe I should put that in here. I've got the thing that I said I wasn't gonna take because a lot of my friends are like, didn't use those but then since doing hypnobirthing 
I changed my mind and thought, why not just give it a go? I bought these in Primark, they were like three pounds and they're little LED candles. Um, I don't know, if we have time to set the room up, I think it might be nice just to like set the scene and the mood in the room. You can also just put in the light in the pool. We will see if I use them, but I thought there's no harm in getting like a little pack of LED candles. Guess what? I didn't end up using the LED tea lights. Surprise, surprise, I feel like no one does, but they were like three pounds from Primark, so. They didn't take up much space in the bag, but yeah, when I got there, I was far too distressed to even think about it. And also, I actually wasn't that aware of like the surroundings in the room and and how like well lit the room was. Like I think they they turned the lights off anyway, and yeah, I just I just didn't have time to think about it. So that's everything from this bag. Let's see what's missing from my notes. My lip balm, which will be in my handbag. I want to buy some Evian face spray. I think I use my lip balm. I don't think I use the face spray. My wireless headphones, which are in my handbag. Definitely use the headphones all the way to the hospital and like when I was in the waiting room and for the whole beginning part until I was like in the birth in the suite and then I think I took them out. Phone charger. Oh, my Mamma Mio spray, which is on my bedside table. That um, we've been using that when we practice hypnobirthing. It's a really nice smell, so it'd be nice to take that. We did end up using the Mamma Mia spray quite a lot. I think Rich, that was the one thing Rich like remembered to do, even when we went up to the maternity ward. He like sprayed the room, and it was just so nice to have that calming spray. And because we'd be using it every evening throughout the pregnancy, pretty much, especially at the end when we were practicing our hypnobirthing like breathing techniques, it reminded me of like going to bed and feeling calm and. I just love that spray. I've told all my pregnant friends to buy it. And maybe my Therapy Aura spray for my face. Didn't use the Therapy Aura spray. <laughs> That's it. That's everything for my during labour bag. Pretty realistic. I don't know. Did I go over the top? We shall see. Okay, this next bag is the big one. This is post-delivery. Because I think during labour, everyone says they end up not even opening a bag or using anything. But afterwards, you might end up staying in the hospital. Or there's lots of things you just might need or want. So we're taking a big duffel bag for this one. Let's open it up and see what's inside. It's mainly big because the things inside are big, like these. Maternity towels with wings. These are the ones from mother care. I've got a few options because I don't... I really want to be comfortable and not having to go out and get things and I don't know I really like the idea of wings because they don't like move around but then I don't know we'll see so these are the options of wings but then I've also got the tenor lady pants these are full-on like nappies diapers for you in America that you can just put on and then just chuck away so I've got some of those as well okay so the tenor lady pants were incredible that's what I wore for the first I think that's what I wore for the first two days I was in hospital for two, two days and while I was there they were just so easy. They're literally adult nappies and every time I needed to change it, I just tore the sides, threw in the bin and put on a new one. Rich had to kind of help me. It was so hard to kind of stand up um, for the first few days after having a C-section. It literally feels like your insides are going to fall out. I can't describe the feeling. Um, so those were just the easiest for me. I didn't want to have to put knickers on and then a pad and I don't know. It was just so like messy and easy. Um, I actually didn't bleed for that long. It stopped after two weeks. So I, I think it's different for everyone. So I think I used the tenor nappies whilst at hospital. And then when I got home, I may have used the mother care pads with wings for a little while. But then I pretty much straight on went to just normal sanitary pads and it was absolutely fine. So I would probably leave the pads at home next time and just take the tenor. Although if I hadn't had a C-section, would I have done that? Yeah, probably. I think I'd just take the tenor pants. Lovely. Got a shower cap. Weird one, I know. You guys know how stressy I am about my hair and I think I want to have a shower and I won't want to get my hair wet because I won't want to be washing my hair when I've just had a baby, so. I did use the shower cap when I had a shower. <laughs> A shower cap just in case i've got a little list for my toiletries in the toiletry bag in here i've got a mini deodorant use that and i've just got a little moisturizer because i think if anything i'll just want to wash my face and moisturize it so i've got some face wipes from yes to cucumber moisturizer and yeah i did just use a face wipe moisturizer like the next day and then i've just got toothbrush i'm hoping rich will take toothpaste i did brush my teeth and some hair bands i've made the decision not to take any makeup or hair straighteners with me originally on my list i was going to and then i just thought i don't care if my hair is frizzy and i don't care if i look crap with no makeup on i just think it's the last thing i'll be thinking about and yes i'm sure i'm going to want to take a photo of me and the baby and i'll probably look back and be like i look horrific if i was going to take makeup i would have just taken concealer bronzer and mascara just those three i just i'm just not going to I'm sure someone could get it for me if i really wanted it and i just i'm going to make a point of not doing it because i really just don't think that's what you need to be concerning yourself with when you've just had a baby i so did not care about my hair or makeup i'm so glad i didn't take straighteners and makeup 
I wouldn't have used it for sure. Yeah, those are the only kind of toiletries that I've got. In this bag, I've got all the kind of like post delivery type toiletries. Oh, this bag makes me sad. All the gadgets really that I'm gonna give a go. I've got Femme Fresh wipes. I use the Femme Fresh wipes. And I've got some wet wipes as well in case I want to like wash my body. I've got the Expert Midwife Spritz for Bits, which is a spray for down there. I didn't end up using that because my bits weren't sore. I've got some breast pads. Did use those. I've got some nipple shields. Did use those, biggest regret. Let's not get into it. I've got tucks, which are like medicated cooling pads. They're covered in witch hazel. And I've got this like funny contraption, which is like, let me see if I can show you. So you can like spray yourself when you're weeing afterwards. I obviously didn't end up using a lot of the gadgets for down there because the baby didn't come out from down there. Why not give it all a go, see if it helps. That's everything in there. More pads. <laughs> these are the Lady Maxi Night Pads. Maybe I could leave these ones at home. I think I used those when I got home. I don't know which ones to take. <laughs> I've got some slippers to walk around in afterwards because I think the flip-flops would be gross and it'd be nice to have something a bit snuggly. These are from Primark. Didn't use the slippers. The hospitals are so hot. I've got a dressing gown again from Primark. I just went to Primark to buy everything, but this is actually a really nice, it's like a kind of waffle dressing gown. That would be good if I don't like get my own room and I need to walk down the hall to go to the bathroom or something. I don't think I used the dressing gown either. I think I spent the whole time just in the nighty. Maybe I did use it when I was like walking around. And then I've got a massive towel. I'm taking my own towel. Um, I think they recommend to bring your own towel. Taking a dark colour just in case. Use the towel. And then the only other thing in here is this kind of like packing cube, which inside, a couple of feeding bras, loads of big knickers. I've got a couple of uh, feeding vests and then a big large t-shirt. Big loose t-shirts, vest tops, feeding bras, knickers. I think I just wore the big, loose Primark men's t-shirt for like weeks afterwards and in the hospital. I didn't want to wear a tight vest top at the beginning, so the big t-shirts were very handy. And then I've also bought this nighty from um, Primark to sleep in if I need to stay the night. I think it'd be nice to have my legs, because apparently it's just so hot, my sister said. And this is good because it's got some buttons as well if I am feeding. This nighty was amazing. I wore this in hospital and I wore it at home a lot. And it was just so nice and loose and soft and it had buttons and it was great. So then on my list, the only things that are missing are comfy tracksuit bottoms um, to go home in. So I might take my like maternity tracksuit bottoms um, and a jumper. Oh, also in that bag is a little feeding cape if I want it. I didn't use the feeding cape. Oh my God, it was like the opposite experience. Like at one point in hospital I had Rich and three midwives literally I was just topless and they were just staring at my boobs like there is absolutely no like feeding cape situation in hospital I did not find that at all so I think that's more for when you start going out if you want to do that and then that's it I think I've done pretty well I don't think this is too OTT let's see what I actually ended up using and not using I think it'll be so interesting but I think I've done well the hospital's 10 minutes from my house so if I need more it's easy for someone to go home and get it or there's always shops nearby and stuff so I'm not panicking but yeah that's everything for now so that's it I don't think there was that much stuff that I didn't end up using I think I packed quite realistically and there's not many things I would change next time um, apart from the odd like LED tea light but maybe next time I would like full for it again like just the idea of like setting up candles in a room <laughs> I guess it doesn't hurt going in having that kind of positivity of what to expect but as I said if you haven't seen my last two videos like my labour and delivery story and then the one where I introduced Grey to you guys go have a watch of those I'm hoping to start making some more videos soon Rich and I have had a little rejig with our work home life schedules and we're gonna try share things it's 2019, it's a very modern family situation, but we both love our jobs and we both love our daughter and we're gonna see if we can share both and make it work. So hopefully I'll be filming some more videos soon, but please let me know what you wanna see because I'm so in like mummy baby world. She's only two and a half months old. So at this point, most people are very much not working. So my mind is very much there, but also I know it's boring for you guys if I just talk about like mummy baby stuff and I wanna do some of the stuff I did before as well. So if you have any ideas for videos that you wanna see, please let me know because it's gonna take me a little while to get back into the swing of things and like try and get my brain back to that mode again. But I am enjoying filming. I'm enjoying doing Instagram. So um, I don't know when I'm gonna be back with like a full on every week schedule again. It might be a bit hazy for a while, but I'm gonna try and 
do stuff whenever I can. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are pregnant, I hope you found it helpful. Good luck. Um, it's amazing. Just don't be nervous because what happens happens. You really have quite little control over the birth. All you can do is practice your breathing techniques um, and just get your partner to learn as much as they can and figure out what's in these bags so they can help you. I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you soon, hopefully with another video. Bye.